Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 18 for our Godot Action RPG series. In this video, we're going to be adding the UI for the player's health and some, and we'll be adding in the trees as well, just as kind of like a little add-on at the end of the video, because it doesn't justify its own video, so we'll be putting that at the end of this one. Let's get started by adding in some sort of a UI for our character. Now we're going to start by making we're go we're going to start by making a new node in our world scene here. It's going to be a control node, and we'll just uh, we'll have it be a label for now. Okay, so a label is a node. Most of the control nodes in Godot are related to UI elements. So anything with a control node is related to, related to UI. And their position is different from a normal node. You can see they inherit from canvas item. And so they don't have the same type of position. If you come and look at our label here, you can see that we have a layout. Up here we've got some interesting um, I'm going to undo that. What did I do? I made like a red line there. It's, I'm not even sure what I did. Uh, but we've got our label here. And this, oh, I probably moved the origin or something. It might have to do with the, the label here. But this is our label, and it has some different information here that isn't the same as like a node 2d you can see we've got an anchor and that is represented by these little green ui elements here we can see we're anchored to the top left corner of the screen right now which is why everything is zero 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 and you can see we have a margin which is basically just the size of our label right now you can see that changing right as we change this size and we do have, we have a rect here, which contains our position and our size and our min size. And control nodes in Gido are very powerful. They have a lot of stuff built into them, but they're also a little confusing. We're gonna start simple and we're not gonna deal with a lot of these different properties. They are very powerful and you can get it, you know, set up to where your, your control nodes will scale properly and be, you know, what do they call it? What, what's that word that they use? Like, I don't even remember. But if you scale your screen, the control nodes will scale with it and adapt properly to your screen size and be anchored properly. So there's a lot of power behind them. But this label right here, we're just going to set it up here. We're just going to say HP equals four. Right, we can save on our game. So now our character has this label up at the top left of the screen that says HP equals four. However, if we take damage, it actually doesn't, it doesn't change this label right here. So we would have to connect it somehow to our, to our character's health, right? And update that properly. So we, couldn't, we can come in here and to make things simpler, I'm going to actually add another control node. This will just be a base control node with nothing in it really, and we'll put our label as a child of it. And then we'll just leave it like that for now. And we'll call this control node health UI. And we'll actually save and we'll actually instance this as its own scene. So we'll do, where is that here? May, let's see, save branch as scene, here we go. And we'll save it in UI here. Okay, and we'll give it a script to attach a script to it. Now the reason I didn't just attach a script to the label here is because we're actually not going to be using a label, we're going to be using some hearts, but for now I want to show you how to do it with a label, and then we'll change that in a minute to be hearts. But we have the same base either way, so we've got our base control node here, either way. And we'll come into our script. And what we need to do here is add our own variables here. So var hearts. Well, yeah, we'll call it hearts for now, even though we're just using the label. 
we'll say hearts equals 10. Wait, no. Four. We know it's going to be four. Set get set hearts. We're creating a hearts variable and we're going to have a setter for it. We'll have max hearts. And have a setter for that as well. So, and we'll get access to our label. So we'll just say label here. Label. We'll say function set hearts value hearts equals lamp value zero max hearts. Okay. So when we set our hearts, Oops, I forgot to do the colon and tab that in properly. So when we set our hearts, we're going to clamp that value so that our hearts are never less than zero and never greater than our max hearts. Set max hearts. And we'll say max hearts equals max value in one. So our max hearts can never be less than one. And we'll have a ready function. And inside of our ready function, we will set our max hearts, self.max hearts equals player stats dot health, max health, self dot hearts equals player stats dot health. Okay, so we're setting our max hearts to be the player's max health and our hearts to be the player's, whoops, this should be max health. Wait, no, health. And our hearts to be the player's health. Yeah, we got it right. We got it right the first time. Okay, and then we need to connect to our player stats. Wait, did we set up the player stats? Um, health changed? I don't remember if we did. Let's come into stats here. And we have no health as a signal. And that's all we have, right? Yep, that's it. So we need to add a new signal to our stats called health changed. And this signal will be emitted each time our health actually changes. So we'll say signal health changed. And then it will have a new value, the new value that the health is being changed to. So each time our, we set our health here, we can emit signal health changed, and we can, we can actually send emit out an argument with it too. And that will be our new health value, like that. Easy enough, right? So whenever our health changes, we emit a signal saying health changed. Now if we come back into our health UI here, we can connect to that signal. So player stats dot connect. We want to connect to health changed. And we want to we want to do self, connect to ourself. And then what function do we want to connect to? We want to connect to set hearts. And what it will do is it will take the argument from the health changed signal right, which will be our new health amount, and it will pass that argument into our set hearts as the value right here. And of course, this is going to update our actual variable here. So let's, let's run the game here. And you can see our, I got to kill this bat. It's going to be in the way. Okay, we did get hit once, I think, right? So our, our label here still shows four. But if we come into our remote scene here, and we look at our health UI, we can actually see that our hearts did update to being three. So we got damaged and our variable updated to be three here, but our label didn't ever actually update. So we need to make sure that we update the label as well. So we'll connect this set hearts function to update the label. Now, you don't have to have your own variables here like this. And if you were just using a label, it might be easier not to to just have some sort of 
you know, update health label function. And whenever health changed gets emitted, you would update the, the label. But we're going to actually be setting up this health UI to be hearts. And when I was doing that, it was easier for me to have these variables so that I could actually test them in the editor. So, but we'll set that now. So we'll come into our set hearts here and we'll just say if heart, well, if label does not equal null, label.text equals uh, HP equals, and then we'll do plus string version of hearts. Okay. Hearts, I did something wrong here. Label, oh, I've got a typo. There we go. Okay, we've got, now we're updating our HP whenever the, our, our HP label, whenever the player gets hit. You can see now it's going down properly. And we die, we're at zero HP. We're not even using max hearts yet, obviously but we will be using it. So let's switch all of this now. We've set up our label, but we're gonna fix this so that it's no longer a label. But now you understand the basics of how you could update a label like this as well. So we're kind of learning two things at once with this. But now we're going to be using a different method, which is, if we come into, we can get rid of our label here. We have a heart, we have two, we're gonna add two new control nodes and these are going to be called, we're going to be using the texture rect node. So I guess we could just search it, texture, texture rect here, okay? And this first one is going to be heart UI empty. This is going to contain the hearts when they're empty when when we don't have any heart there so come into ui drag in heart ui empty dot png drop it right here okay that looks good but we need this to repeat right so that when we drag this out it actually repeats so come to stretch mode and do tile now it should properly tile this as we stretch this out Right, so we can get more hearts. So we could set it to four hearts, for example. And the length for that, we might want to turn off snapping so that we just have pixel snap on. But we can easily set it to four hearts like this. Okay. Now we're going to add another one, texture rect, and we'll call this one heart UI full. And we'll drag in heart UI full. And we'll also set it to tile. We'll drag this up here. There we go. And we could set it to three hearts or whatever, right? Now you can see how we could manipulate this value right here in order to create more or less hearts. And if we come into the rect here, the size is what we're actually changing. Okay, you can see as I move this, it changes the size. And these are attached to the base health UI node. So if we, move, if we move this around, and I grabbed it instead of moving it, but if we move this around, they move with it. So we'll be able to position that anywhere we want in the room. Probably wanna shrink this down so that it's not as big. Okay, so obviously our label isn't here anymore. We're not using a label for this anymore. We're going to be modifying the, the rect size of these two UI elements, right? So we'll come into here and we'll say on ready var heart UI full. We'll get access to our heart UI full. On ready var heart UI empty. Get access to that as well. Now when we set our heart UI 
when we set our hearts here, we want to change the rect size of our hearts UI full. So we'll say if heart UI full, it's not equal null. Heart UI full. I have an uppercase U in there and that's driving me crazy. How did I manage that? There we go. Okay. Not on that one though. Okay, good. Dot rect size dot x equals hearts. So that's our hearts variable right here that we're doing. Times 15. So we're using times 15 because if you come into this texture right here, you can see that it's actually 15 pixels wide. So for each, for each heart we have, for each single heart we have that the character has his health, we need to go over 15 pixels in our texture rect property. Okay, so if hearts is one, then this is only to going to go over 15, which is going to be here. So we're only gonna have one heart, right? Our size over here is going over 15. So we can easily set that up to properly display the right amount of hearts. And we wanna do the same with our max hearts. If heart UI empty does not equal null, heart UI empty dot rect size dot x equals max hearts times 15. So you could set this up to so that this heart system could be applied to other areas of the game if you wanted. That's kind of the point of having these variables up here is so that you could decouple the, the player's stats from these actual variables. So this could work without the player's stats, essentially. That's the idea behind it. Uh, so, but you know, if you wanted to, once again, you could set it up to where this actually doesn't update or to where this just uses the player's stats instead of having its own variables. Both of those are an option. We need our stats to have a max health change signal as well. Signal max health changed value. And then we need a setter and a getter on our max health. Set get. Well, this is an, this is an export variable, so that should be fine. Set get set max health. This is something that I actually didn't do in the reference project. because I don't actually have the player's max health ever change, but you may want it to. Max health changed. There we go. So we're just gonna put this in and set it up so that you should be able to change the max health. Now, when, when we change the max health right here, Generally, what you'd want to do is make sure that your actual health is never higher than your max health, right? And so you'd have to come in here as well and say health dot health equals hmm, self dot health to make sure we call the setter equals max, no, min, health, max, health. So that way our health can never be larger than our max health. If you set the max health to lower than your actual health, then your health is going to drop down and be set to that max health value as well. That's what we're doing here. And that should then carry over to this as well, but you may want to set, set it up to do it in here as well. So self.hearts equals min hearts max hearts, like that. The same thing. Okay, so once we have that set up, we can connect to that signal as well. Player stats.connect health 
max health changed self set max health or max hearts i mean but make it a string here i can't wait until in godot 4 they're actually going to have signals and functions have their own types so we don't have to use strings like this all the time which will be so nice but for now we got to use strings that's that's the what we're working with here so let's see art ui empty this should all work now theoretically so let's run the game and see if this works okay we've got an error message here Cannot use the function min. Cannot convert argument one from nil to float. So, okay, I see what's happening here. I was a little worried about this actually because of our export variable. So our export variable here, because our health is an on ready var, it actually doesn't have a value when we set our max health right here. Because it's an on ready var. So the solution would just be to, well, we'd have a problem here when we're setting the max health. I wonder if we want to, this is what happens when I branch outside my reference project a little bit, we get to do a little bit of debugging together. So basically what happens here is because this is an on ready variable right here, and if you remember, we did that so that we could just set our health property to our max health right here, right? So we could say health equals max health. And that does actually, that does actually work but the problem is now when we set our health here, if we try and clamp our actual health here, because this variable hasn't been created yet, because this set function is being set right at the start of the game before we're actually calling the ready function, uh, our health doesn't actually exist yet. So we're having a problem here. So we'll just turn this into a normal variable and then we'll come and set, we'll make a ready function down here and just say, self.health equals max health. In the ready function. And I think that'll work. Yep. And now our hearts are, oh, it didn't update when we died. That's interesting. It should have. Okay, we'll have to figure out what's going on there. Now the question is, is it the hearts? Well, let's actually, let's actually use our remote inspector again, because that should give us a really good indication of what happened. Let's come into our remote inspector and we'll look at our health UI and we can see these variables here and we can see that hearts has been set to zero, okay? So our hearts have been set to zero properly but the UI, our, empt our full here, hasn't been properly set to, hasn't been properly set to zero. So let's see what happens when we come in here and we set our size to zero. Okay, that didn't work, it set it to 15 here. So there's a problem. The problem is that we can't actually set this to zero the size, it's not letting us make it smaller than, than 15 here. And that is a big problem because we want to be able to set it to zero. So if we come into our size flags here, I think the solution is to set this to expand if I remember right, let's see here. Let's try setting it to zero now. No, it still didn't work, so that wasn't the solution. So expand here will allow us to have this um, control nodes will expand to try and fill the control node that they're in. And so when we set this to expand, it would, it would try and fill up the, the parent control node that it was in. 
Let's see here. Part 2 I full. So, uh, let's see. What was it? Oh, it was expand up here, actually, I think. Was that it? That was it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I got the two expands confused. So this one right here will make it try and fill up the, the space that it's in. This expand up here is actually a little bit less. It says the texture scales to fit its bounding rectangle, uh, which, makes it, which makes it seem the same. So I'm going to be honest, I don't actually understand this expand right here as well as I do down here. And it's kind of interesting that they both have the same name. This one I've used uh, in multiple places and I have a better understanding of it. And I'm not going to go into the exact details about what it does. I, I think I want to do a, a Godot series that kind of goes into control nodes. They kind of need their own series. They're rather complicated, powerful, but they're, they're not easy to use. And they feel a little bit counterintuitive at first. Um, but up here, this expand, I haven't really used that often. All I know is that if I set this, then I'm able to actually set my size to zero properly now. It won't default to 15. So you'll need to have that active. So then let's run the game again. And if we get hit, you can see we can lose all our health all our hearts that way. Let's try and inside of our player script, inside of the ready function, well actually let's just go into our player's stats. I want to try setting our player's max health to something higher. So let's set the max health to six or so. Save the game and run. And there we go. Now we have our player has six health. You can easily set the max health value like that. Let's come, let's set this back to four. Save. We still get this interesting uh, error here for the editor that I, I never quite figured out. Nobody really knew what that was. I think it's just an editor error here. It actually won't affect our game. Let's close out of our player stats. Let's come back into our player now. And inside of our player, what I want to test here to make sure that this is working properly is we'll make it so it, this doesn't make any sense, by the way. But each time we, we roll, let's set our player stats dot max health minus equals one. So I want to make sure that this properly updates the parts. Oh, darn it. Oh, managed to kill it without getting hit. Okay, so if we roll. Okay, so it did set it did set our players. It set our heart down less one, but it's not actually setting the max health properly. And we're getting an error here, so I'm glad I tested this. It says error calling method from signal max health changed. Method expected one argument, but called with zero. Okay, so let's come into that. Okay, so this is where we went wrong. You can see when I emit the signal inside of our stats, I don't actually send out the new value like I do here with our health changed. So we need to make sure and send out max health right here so that that gets updated properly. And save, we can clear this right here. Run the game. Get rid of this bat and roll, and there we go. Now we can kill ourselves, but we're never allowed to actually set our max health less than one. So uh, it does leave the max health at one, which makes sense. It never actually gets rid of the UI, which is what we intended. But you can see we are able to set our max health to be less. Or if we have our player, we can actually increase the max health as well. And that doesn't give us health, right? It just increases the max health. And the reason it lowers our actual health is because we set up for that use caseage where you could potentially have less, where you, you would never want to have more health than you do max health, at least in the game that we're designing. 
Now you could make this go off the screen and it won't properly loop around to the next, to the bottom here. Uh, but that's not a problem I'm going to be solving in this series. You'll just never want to let your player get that many hearts. So we'll remove this here and wait, where is it? Right here, we'll remove it where we're actually adding to our max health. And you can see that that is now working properly. Our health UI here is working quite nicely. Should be able to shrink this down to be the same size as these. Uh. Okay, and we'll save. So our health bar is working properly. Let's quickly make a new scene for our tree. Come in here, we'll do a 2D scene. We'll actually delete that. We'll make it a static body. This is gonna be review a little bit here, just like our bushes. Do a static body, we'll add a sprite, or like this. Come into find our world. Come into grab our tree. And we we'll want to move it up so that we get it centered better on where we want the on where we want our origin for the Y sorting to be. Then we'll attach a collision shape. Collision shape, and I'm going to use a capsule. I'm going to rotate this capsule by 90 degrees. Drag this in and move it up a bit. Something like that should probably be good. And we're going to add another sprite. This will be our shadow. And I think we need the big shadow for this. So where did I put sprites or the shadows? Are they in? Oh, I have a shadows folder. We'll use a large shadow for this. There we go. Our tree has a nice shadow now. Save this inside of world. Save. Come back here. Got our grass and our bushes. So let's create a new Y sort node. Y sort. This will be for our trees. And we'll instance some trees on this node. Probably only do one or two trees because they're big. Tree scene, drop it here. Tree scene, maybe I'll drop this one up here. Call it good. Make sure they, the collisions make sense and they work with Y sorting and such. Okay, looks great. Our bushes don't have shadows either. Let's actually add shadows to everything. Bush, there we go. Add a sprite, make sure it's above our other sprite here. Shadow sprite, come into shadows. Do a medium shadow for this one. Wait, maybe I did a large shadow for the bush actually. Oops. If you hold alt, you can make sure and select the one that you currently have. I guess I did medium shadow for, or large shadow for the bush, it looks like. Or maybe I didn't even do shadows for the bush. I don't remember. But there we go. Now our bushes have shadows as well. Let's give our player a shadow. Come in here. Add a sprite. Drag it up here. Shadow sprite. And I think I did medium for the player. And then hold alt. Drag it down, let's see, maybe to there. I think I moved it down only one. Now our character has a little bit of a shadow too. There we go. Ah, that is killing me. So now we've got our hearts up there in the top left hand corner. We can actually move them down. 
So let's grab them here, move it down just a bit. Um, I'm gonna turn off snap. I'd rather have it positioned somewhere like here. So it's just a little bit inside from the corner. And this, these hearts will not follow you around in the view. We'll be handling that later when we start, when we add the view and such. Um, so if you were to add your own camera to this game, these hearts won't follow it. But we will be solving that when we add a camera. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching it. It was made possible by my 1bit Ghetto Kickstarter backers. I'll have a link for that in the, in the description. If you enjoyed the video and learned something from it, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you all later.